This program was made possible by a generous grant from Rex and Ruth Maughan. Last year, millions of you responded to the sorrow of others with your means, tender hearts, and your helping hands. Compassion for others has always been a fundamental characteristic of members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Savior asks us to succor the weak, lift up the hands which hang down, and strengthen the feeble knees. Y es eh, lo que Jesucristo ha enseñado, que debemos de ayudar a las demás personas. Pues porque todos son hijos de Dios y todos tienen el derecho, la oportunidad y a todos se les debe de ayudar. It's what the Savior called us to do. To be able to love our brothers and sisters regardless of race, religion, creed, no matter where they are in the world. In every continent, in every press, in every society, there is always people who are in need. Well, I think that's what the church is about. We're supposed to be helping people. If we can't share the gospel with people um, by mouth, then it can be through our example. We're just trying to meet the needs of the people in the world, and it's a great service that we can give. It's a volunteer service that we can give. I know how blessed myself and my family have been throughout our lives, so if we can lend a helping hand in any way, we will. It's something very bonito for all the church and for all the members of it, to be participate in these events. We learn from the Savior about clothing the naked, providing water for the thirsty, uh, food for the hungry, and he said uh, that's the, uh, the essence of the gospel. So humanitarian efforts is the heart of the gospel. When we reach out and help with a disaster, or we help with uh, resuscitation training or we do a vision care program like we're doing over in Nigeria when we provide wheelchairs and we partner with with other organizations each one of those exercises in my mind is is a way of showing the world that we are truly Christians that we believe in a God whose son came to save the world and that we believe that we should behave as he's asked us to behave and that is with compassion and, and love and kindness, and that our whole, the whole spirit of our gospel permeates through these things that we do. These wonderful couples, these missionary couples who come and have no other desire except to bless people because Heavenly Father wants them to. Perhaps the most marked feature of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is its people. Under the direction of church leaders, its members are encouraged to lead a life of active service to its fellow man. With a humanitarian effort drawing on the resources of over 12 million members worldwide, a unique culture is born, a culture of service and volunteerism, a virtual army of willing hearts and helping hands. Working alongside local partners, these volunteers will donate their skills and thousands of hours of labor to help organize a measles and polio vaccination campaign in West Africa, oversee the construction of a thousand new homes benefiting victims of the tsunami in Sumatra, Indonesia, deliver wheelchairs to a leper colony, and break out their tools to help repair homes in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Of course, there are many challenges that go with any humanitarian work, especially when volunteering. But each one has their story of why this work has been a rewarding experience and how they will never be the same.
kami pergi sawah yang tinggal di rumah nenek sekitar umur 100 lebih lah sama anak saya yang kecil ini yang satu yang warga nana maya yang SMA dia tinggal untuk jaga ini kemudian saya dengar udah nak keluar terus saya bilang akhirnya udah datang lah pas dibuat terus air itu wow nak ke sawah terus kami hanyut nenek di belakang mama sini anak saya yang perempuan tuh sebelah kiri udah buat terus Gula menemian tahu itu dia tampil tu kudih matai. Tahu lebih banyak lo pati pati tahu 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 tahu. Abis banyak, abis tampil. Karena ka 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 ni mati bulu. More than two years have passed since the largest tsunami in modern history struck southeastern Asia. One of the hardest hit locations was along the island coast of Sumatra in northern Indonesia. For surviving communities, the ongoing struggle to recover and reconstruct is still a daily reality. Thousands of families still face a lack of permanent housing and a means of sustainable livelihood. <laughs> Following the initial response to the tsunami, it quickly became clear that the need would extend beyond the first few months. The church called upon the resources of humanitarian missionaries like Bill and Linda Ham of Anchorage, Alaska to volunteer. These volunteers pay their own way, often living in remote foreign locations and bring with them a wide range of experience and skills to lend a hand. We'd wanted to serve a mission for a long time. We had, you know, children, so they, we, when they, our last child went off to college, we decided that was that was a good time. We didn't ask for any specific place, or not that you really could, but we just didn't. We just put our, our papers in and uh, the call came to Indonesia and it's been a good thing. When the tsunami occurred and we all saw this terrible disaster unfolding before our eyes on the television screens and the, and the things that were happening to these people and, and all of us were touched by it uh, all over the world, I just felt sympathy and concern for the people that, that were so devastated. And I, I just kind of had a feeling that that would be certainly a big challenge, but it's something that, uh, that I might be able to do. Together with partners and the community, these volunteer missionaries oversee the development of sustainable long-term projects that are meant to improve the health and well-being of individuals and families. In order to operate in countries where the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not formally recognized, humanitarian efforts function under the name LDS Charities. In the case of the Hams, they have been assigned to work with the International Organization for Migration to build nearly a thousand permanent houses for tsunami victims. The project between IUM and LDSC is it's a nine month project. It started in April last year and it runs until January next year. It involves almost $10 million for the construction of 952 houses. We identify the sites. LDSC people are on site. They're actually living in the first houses we constructed. The first two houses we constructed are lived in by LDSC staff who help us with the identification of the site, the verification of the beneficiaries, etc. Those sort of things. That the main focus of the project is construction of houses. Residing in the small village of Kuku on the eastern shore of the island of Sumatra, the Hams are monitoring the first stages of house construction in an area that represents only a small fraction of the more than 700 kilometers of affected Indonesian coastline. We are now working with the staff of IOM who are doing the job that I was trained to do in my, my whole life. It just seems to bring together many aspects of the experience and training that I've had over the last 35 years of 
practicing as a consulting civil engineer. Uh, in the case of the Latter-day Saints Charities, what we're seeing is uh, a great cooperative venture. An existing well here that's awful close to the building. The charities have been involved in the development of this particular uh, housing program from a very, very early stage. They've been very proactive and very engaged in the development of the project. So I feel like I'm able to talk their language, understand their problems, and be able to help them to be as effective as they can in managing and inspecting uh, the work that's underway here. This is the septic system for that house. I was looking to see if the water table came up any as a result of the heavy rain, but it looks like there's still quite a, quite a bit of depth there to the water table, so that's good. This is a unique area of the world, I think, as far as missionary service is concerned. We're here in a Muslim country where the, the official government policy is that Christians are not allowed to, to proselyte or uh, uh, give out information or literature or do anything that might be interpreted as being trying to convert anyone from the Muslim religion. Well, this one's ready to live in, and that one's not ready yet, so I can see why he chose that one. <laughs> We're here uh, serving strictly in a humanitarian uh, services capacity. Okay, yeah, we asked if we could see the plans that you're using here on the project. You know, I have this desire to share the gospel with other people, and yet realizing I can't bear my testimony, I can't hand out Book of Mormons, I need to be more giving and helpful in other ways to share my testimony with my actions since I can't do it with my mouth. We try to read our scriptures each morning and then uh, we go to try to work on our projects, whatever those happen to be. Usually we'd go visit some of the houses that are under construction or we hope are under construction <laughs> and, uh, and Bill's good at with his engineering background to see what needs to be done or what needs to be rectified and then uh, and make make those recommendations. I think I'm going to have to talk to Yelena about this practice that I'm seeing all over the place of putting these washers in here for shims. It creates a point load that's putting stress on that concrete and chipping it out. I've watched him several occasions when he's dealt with people when there's a there's either been a conflict or a disagreement or something with a different way to do something and he's kind of held back. Did they have these foundations in like this when you were here before? I think the Lord's guided him to help him make uh, righteous decisions and how we should deal with it and and often turning the tide maybe back to the Indonesians to uh, let them help themselves to solve their own problems. Well she is the uh, the public relations uh, chairman of our our little <laughs> corporation here. <laughs> I will SMS you the number for our accountant in Jakarta. I will do that right away. I will SMS you the, his number, and his name is Ari. Okay, thanks, uh -huh, bye. I think it's good to see where people are living and know where they're coming from and where they've been. I think if it was you and you'd had a your house had been destroyed and then you wanted where do you live? You, maybe there's a tent you can live in. You know, it's time now to to get in a home. Currently, more than 80 senior missionary couples are serving in humanitarian assignments around the world. Whether teaching literacy, organizing family strengthening programs, offering medical assistances, or aiding in relief efforts for disaster victims, these missionaries all carry one hope the hope that their contributions are making a difference. I, I feel that, that we've been given special insight and abilities to be able to see the needs of the people. We can feel that the hand of the Lord guiding and helping us along the way. He's not solving all the problems by any means, but we can feel his presence and we can tell that we're, we have that feeling that we're here doing what, uh, what he would have us do. In our travels, we've become aware of, of many more needs than seemingly we could possibly meet. So sometimes we feel yeah. some frustration in not being able to 
do everything that we feel that, uh, that could be done. I think we try to do a lot of things and some things are more successful than others and some aren't as successful as we wish they'd been. We just try to do the best we can. We know that there's more to be done, but we can, at least we can do something, so let's do what we can. Perhaps the most difficult part of volunteer work is knowing that you cannot help everyone. And though this farmer has finally restored some of his affected rice crop, he and his family still wait for a house. There is another distinct side to the volunteer efforts of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. In the past 20 years, it has shipped 47,000 tons of food and 63,000 tons of other supplies to more than 150 countries. In 2003, the church donated $3 million to support a worldwide measles initiative providing vaccinations to over 200 million children in 40 countries. Behind the increasing number of material donations come thousands of hours of labor. Not all volunteers are full-time missionaries. Often labor comes from a workforce of a different kind. The other piece of it is the average member of the church, whether it's through a Relief Society or one of our youth organizations, who are doing service projects. Organizations say, how can you do what you do? And we have to say, it's because of the volunteers. Not only do the volunteers provide manpower, but it also brings a tremendous spirit into the work. When you talk about the emotional stability six months after a disaster of this scale, you're talking about uh, pure trauma. The people had lost everything. Church headquarters looked at that and said, you know, there's a need there. <laughs> After that, there, there was a turning point. Within the first weekend, the area authorities uh, dispatched uh, some of the uh, surrounding stakes and sent them down to help. And as they arrived, uh, they were uh, surely a blessing. This is where they'll sign in. They'll sign in with their name, their stake, and a contact number. They'll go Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning before they return home, working at these families' homes at their skill level. See, she lives next door to Brother Scott. Never would I have ever expected to see anything like this. Never. It's nothing like what you've seen on camera, anything. You have to be here. It was just mud. In the house, it was right close to eight feet. And out by the road, it was probably nine. We figured that we may have had enough insurance to get a contractor in, but we didn't. I thought to myself, well, we can get back in it. And I didn't think it would take as long as what it's doing now, but it did, and it's still ongoing. This is where Philip sleeps, and this is where Mimi and I sleeps in here. Hey, baby, you awake? Good morning. This is going to be Mimi's little bedroom. And the bathroom here. The water pressure is real low. Washing clothes with cold water, you got to keep washing them over and over and make sure you get them clean. This is Barb's little kitchen over here. And this is where she had her little dining table. And this is about it. So we're trying to go as quick as we can. Now, we're doing some electrical work today, and there's just a few things that need to be done before the drywall goes on. Get these people, they're living, you know, in a trailer now and trying to get them back in their house. So we're hoping to get them dried in and get ready for paint. We're going to we're gonna accomplish quite a bit in just, just a couple days. We're from Roswell, Georgia Stake, Roswell Ward, and uh, that's about a six, six and a half hour drive from here. We left last night around six, uh, trying to get down here to get a good start. Um, We've got about 75 coming down. Six of us decided to come down last night. Uh, we got in around 1.30 local time. Just got up this morning and get, uh, wanted to get an extra day's worth of work in. We started Friday. Uh, right off the bat, we started insulating. And then right behind them, another crew came and started hanging sheetrock. And then when it got to a point where we were stepping on one another, another crew broke off and started finishing the sheetrock. It just worked out real smooth from then on. So with this uh, volunteer labor, it's been uh, a blessing to get them back into their homes uh, much sooner than they, were able, than they would have been able to without it. To date, more than 10,000 days worth of total labor have been donated by church members to victims of Hurricane Katrina. 
Though numbers indicate the sizable volume of assistants, they represent much more than mere statistics. As is often the case, the giver and receiver participate in common experiences of human struggle. They share moments of tragedy, loss, uncertainty, and fear. But they also become mutual beneficiaries in accomplishment, unity, and triumph. While in the act of labor, volunteers often make the most difference in restoring hope in the lives of those in crisis. The challenges that abound us only lead you in one direction, a massive amount of hope, because you know that things have got to get better. More than hope, it is an experience that leaves both giver and receiver forever changed. Whenever a human being can focus their efforts on another human being, um, the, the benefits are great. You forget about your own trials, you feel better about yourself, you feel better about uh, the people you're helping. I, I don't know who it benefits more, if it benefits us or, or, or them more, but uh, I know we both benefit. Uh, these families uh, uh, that, that have been helped, you can see the changes in their countenance you can see the uplift in their spirit. It's something that crosses uh, lines of education, it crosses lines of income, and uh, you know, it just brings us all together. You know, it makes you appreciate what you have, um, and uh, you know, you see they've lost everything. They don't, have a, they don't have anything left. You look in this house and there's nothing left in this house. They're living outside in a trailer, and it makes you pretty grateful for what you have. It's just one of those things we get asked to come and we come and we'll come again if they ask. It gives us a good feeling inside to make sure that we're helping others and we hope someday that they'd help us if we were in the same situation too. It's good to see the people smile on their face once you uh, do service for them. These bunch of guys has been great. Gee, I don't know what we've done without them. By myself, it would be, it's too much. They gave up their family life to come help me. I couldn't believe it. The experience being able to help the people has been awesome. And just the camaraderie with the other members of, of the church here in my ward and also getting to meet people in other wards has been fantastic. A reaffirmation of what I already know, that helping other people makes you feel good. My love for these people has, has grown. I love these people here. They're great people. They're resilient. They're resourceful. They're good hearted people. I just can't explain. It's just a wonderful feeling to have to have people to care for you. Just thank you so much. We really appreciate everything everyone has done. This was charity. <laughs> this was charity. This was fantastic. Yeah, Glad y'all nice. heard me. So thank you so much. Y'all helped out a bunch. Though the church has adequate means, it takes more than a stockpile of physical resources to respond to the problems of suffering. Without volunteers, uh, though we would be able to help, it would be severely diminished. We, uh, we really tread and uh, look forward to and must have the great volunteers that uh, do the legwork and do the professional work and share their skill sets to make all of this come together and happen. Thanks to willing hearts, heads are raised, spirits lifted, and the burdens of many are made light. I'd like to say thank you immensely. I don't even know how to say that strong enough, though. I mean, these people just came in and did something for somebody they didn't know. It makes a difference. I mean, these people are making a difference. I have been very blessed in my life. If I can do anything to pay back a little bit, I'm grateful for that opportunity. I know I'm happier when I have work to do and there's things to do and I can be of service. It hasn't been a sacrifice to go on a mission. It's been a blessing to my life and I'm grateful for the Lord to ex accept that, that I could be accepted as a missionary and have that opportunity. We've been blessed in so many ways as a result of serving this mission. I guess it, it gets into your blood over time. I've never thought I would do anything except try to be of service to other people. One of the very most fulfilling aspects of this assignment has been our close association with the senior missionary couples. They are incredible. Hello there. The How are involvement you? Yeah. and contribution oh, of great. senior couples uh, who are serving humanitarian missions 
has been invaluable and the most significant part of being able to accomplish this work. There's something about volunteerism that brings the spirit into the work that makes it very powerful. The simple word thanks seems almost trite. To each of you whose tender hearts and helping hands have eased the burdens of so many, please accept our heartfelt gratitude. I invoke the Lord's choicest blessings to be with you and your families as you continue to remember those with heavy hearts and hands that hang down. Everyone come sing, the Lord has done great things. Yes, no